Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? That was enthusiastic. Woo! Man, I can just, you guys are like crazy this morning. Fantabulous. Is that even a word? It is now. <laughs> it's your word. Well, as I said, good morning. Welcome. Thank you all for coming this morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know or forgotten because it's been a whole week or two, I'm Mike Ferlin. I'm the lead pastor here at Grace Bible Fellowship. And uh, we are, as Pastor Wally said, in our third week of the Hook series. And I want to welcome you to it. If you've been here for any of it or all of it or none of it, don't worry. We got you covered. If you haven't been here for any of it, you're just looking and saying, what is going on on this stage? Right? And every week, some things are changing. Does anybody who's been here for the last few weeks know something that's different this week that was not? Yes. Yeah, our hooks, right? Someone asked me last night, they're like, what are you going to go fishing for with that? And I was like, people. <laughs> right? We're supposed to be fishers of men. That's what we're talking about, right? Think about swinging those things around, see what I catch. Those of you who are sitting in the front row are thinking, man, I made a bad seat choice. Those of you who are sitting in the back are like, yes, I just want you to know there's a lot of rope. I can get back there to you, right? I know, but this is going on. So this morning, as I said, we're continuing with our series, uh, Hooked. Uh, and this morning, why don't you, why don't we do something a little bit different? Why don't you stand up for a moment, turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 10. We're going to read one verse in chapter 10 of John. John is, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in the New Testament. If you uh, want to, you can look it up. New Testament it's under J for John. Not that it's alphabetical in the New Testament or in the Old Testament. I'm just letting you know that John is spelt with a J. Right? I, I'm, I'm just here to help you. Right? I went to Madomic. I can spell-ish, you know. So John chapter 10 we're going to read verse 10. Jesus is speaking here. If you have a Bible uh, that has the red letter edition or something different that lets you know when Jesus himself is speaking, Jesus is speaking in this verse. And I'm going to just read this one verse. I want us to just kind of think about it, what Jesus is talking about here. So in John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says this, A thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Let's just pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've come to give us life and life abundantly. And Lord, we're going to look at your word today, and I just pray that we would leave here different than we came in. And I just thank you and praise you. And it's in your name that we pray, Jesus. Amen. All right, you may be seated. So our series hooked is obviously... By the, the decorations thing you can tell is a, a, a series about fishing, right? And so I'm going to talk about fishing again this morning. Uh, and even if you don't like fishing, there's something here for you. And if you do like fishing, that's awesome because fishing is a biblical sport. I'm just letting you know. Jesus talked about fishing. A lot of the disciples were fishermen, right? He used the example of fishing a lot. So it's a biblical sport. So if you ever want to get into something and say, I want to get into sports and I want to be in something that's biblical, fishing. Fishing is biblical, right? That's why I always tell people. Maybe that's why, like, the whole transition in my life from, you know, a uh, not, I mean, how can I put this? A teenage boy who is not seeking after the Lord, and I transitioned into that as I came to know Christ, into a Christian, and it wasn't as hard because... You know, there's a lot of stuff to do with fishing. I've always loved fishing. But anyway, what if I were to say to you this morning that someone is trying to catch you? There's someone out there fishing for you. And when you're fishing, I have just one of my little trays. I have a bunch of these trays. I have, I have my di different fishing lures in it. And when you go fishing, those who fish know, those who don't, I'm going to educate you on this. I want to make you edumacated, right? When you go fishing, you choose your bait wisely, 
right? You, you choose the bait that's specific to what it is that you're trying to fish for. Now, for me, I prefer to fish for bass. I pre prefer to go bass fishing. Some of you don't like bass fishing. Some of you are like, oh, trout and salmon only. That's fine. You're an elitist. That's cool, right? You know, people are like, bass are trash fish. Like, no, they're not. They're awesome, right? Because they fight. But anyway, so you choose the lure based on what it is that you're fishing for, right? So if you are, like I have this lure, right? This spoon. This is for fishing for pike. This is a pike lure, right? Pike are big. They're mean. They're just giant pickerel, right? I have some trout and salmon stuff in here. I've got, you know, some different colors underwater. I've got deep divers. I've got top waters, right? This is a top water. Goes along the top, pops, right? Makes splashes so the fish are like, ooh, what's that? All right? I have, you know, my spinner. And even on these things, there's things that are different. Like, for instance, this spinner, you can't probably see it if you're watching online this morning. Hey, how are you doing? But I'll let you know. This spinner has a red hook on it because red is like blood. And you think, oh, it's something... It's a fish that I want to eat, and it's already hurt, so it's trailing blood, so I'm going to eat it, right? I have this one for fishing for goldfish. <laughs> no, this isn't my goldfish lure. Never mind, right? I have this thing that looks like a mouse, right? Yeah. And why do we do this? Like, why do I have this and many, 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 many other ones? Is because when I'm fishing for something specific, I want to use a bait that appeals to who it is that I'm fishing for, Right? what it is I'm fishing for. You know, if I'm going after goldfish, I'm not going to throw out, you know, the giant lure that is 10 times bigger than the goldfish because the goldfish is going to be afraid. So I choose bait specifically for what I'm going for. Now, when we're being fished for, the fisherman is doing the same thing for us. The fisherman is looking specifically at what can I use? Like, what color scheme? What style of lure? Like, a topwater or, or deep diver? Or what can I use? And they're handcrafting this lure specifically for you. Now, we've talked about in the last couple of weeks about how God right, is fishing for us, how Jesus said that when we become a follower of Christ, that we are fishers of people, right? We go fishing for people, but there's also another person out there who's fishing for us and this person who's fishing for us wants to catch us reel us in and drag us into the boat but as I said it's it's absolutely true it seems kind of strange like using this analogy but it's true so Jesus wants to catch us right which we've been talking about he wants to catch us that's what we have the the bracelets for right we, you know has the different representation black for our sin and red for the blood of Jesus and green for fruit and gold for righteousness and our hook, you know, which is Jesus to hook us. And Jesus wants to hook us and get us hooked on him so that we go from death into life, right? He wants to bring us out of the water into his boat and he wants to bring us from death into life. Now, conversely, there's another person out there who's fishing for us and that's the devil. And yes, I believe in a devil. Some of you are like, what? You believe in a little guy in a red suit and a pitchfork? No, because the devil doesn't have, you know, a pitchfork and a red thing. I think that's our way of trying to make him cute and cuddly so that it's not as weird. But the, the Bible tells us that there is an enemy, the devil, who's roaming the earth like a lion seeking whom he may devour. We see that he's coming to tempt us. We see in the verse that we read in John 10.10 10, that the thief, who is the devil, comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? So the devil is out there fishing for us, and he is looking for specific things, and he's crafting this lure just for you. He's like, what can I use to catch Mike? Right? What is it that I need? What, you know, uh, how deep does it have to go? What colors does it have to be? What do I have to put into this to catch us? And the reason the devil wants to catch us is because I said Jesus wants to take us from death into life. The devil is reversed. He wants to take us from life into death. Now, if we are a follower of Christ, if we're a Christian, right, if we've taken that step across the bridge, as I said a couple weeks ago, and we know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, He can't take away our eternal life, but He wants to take away our life, our day-to-day -day life. I heard it uh, at a conference yesterday, we were at the Iron Sharpest Irons Conference, and one of the presenters said it this way. He said, we're so worried about adding days to our life 
that we don't add life to our days. Right? And what the devil is trying to do is he's trying to take the life that we have and to get us caught up in death so that nothing that we do matters, so that everything that we do in each and every day that we live, and even if we're a follower of Christ, he says, I want to catch you because I don't want you to go fishing for other people. I don't want you to help Jesus bring them from death into life. He says, I want you to uh, be so confused about adding time to your life, days to your life, or get you caught up in living your life in death so that you can't be effective. Because what the devil knows and what we need to understand is that God has a plan for each and every one of you. And it's awesome. And, and, and he knows that if we catch on to this, if we get hooked by Jesus and we find out that God has a plan for us, that first and foremost that he loves us, that Jesus died for us, it's like, wow, he died for all of our sins. When we catch that, it's like, man, that's amazing. And then when we find out that life has a meaning and a purpose, and that meaning and purpose is to do what God has called us to do, to be us, not to be somebody else, but to be who God created us to be, and to realize that we have this life that's just overflowing, or as Jesus put it, this abundant life, we would be like, yeah, I want that. So the devil's trying to keep us out of that. Jeremiah 29, 11 in God's word says this, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You see, when we catch that, we start following after God. And when we catch a hold of that, that, that hope and that future and that abundant life, we start changing the world around us. We start getting excited. We start going fishing. And we start helping people come from death into life. And people who, who have made that crossing of the bridge who are Christians, we help them start to realize that they can live their life for God and have joy and have happiness and have excitement. We were sharing on the ride back, uh, a few of us uh, who were in my truck coming back from the conference yesterday, how it, it's so sad for me as a pastor to see people and, and churches and Christians who don't understand that there's joy in the Lord. Right? who don't understand what it is to, to follow after God and actually have hope in life. Right? We live in a society that seems to be hopeless, and that's what the devil wants to do, is the devil wants us to get into this mindset of that there's no hope. In James chapter 1, uh, James talks about, especially in 13, verses 13 and 14, he talks about temptation, being tempted. And the cool thing about this is that word tempted that is used there, right? It's in James and in other places when it talks about being, us being tempted is in the original language, it's a, a Greek word and it's called exel komenos. And this is what it means. To lure a fish from cover. So it says that when Satan or the enemy is tempting us, what it actually means in the religious language is he is trying to draw us, the fish, from cover, right? Because when we're in cover, we're safe, we're protected, right? That's why fish go to cover. That's why you don't just see huge fish just swimming around, right, in, in the middle of the lake and like no cover. That's why when you go fishing for them, you're looking for cover because that's where they're at. So Satan, when he tempts us, he wants to pull us out from cover. He wants to catch us. He wants to get us into his boat. So he uses this temptation. And what he wants to do is he wants to get us into this mindset of, of death and, and uh, not living for life. And, you know, some people are like, oh, that's kind of a crazy thought, you know, this old fashioned thought, you know, you Christians and, you know, this devil thing. And, and I say this and I mean this. I think the greatest victory or the greatest thing that the devil has done in our world is not to try and get us to think that God isn't real, but to get us to think that he's not real. You see, because if there's no enemy, if there's no person out there trying to catch us, then, and trying to get us to go from moral things to immoral things and to, from right to wrong, then there's no reason for Jesus, right? Oh, evil doesn't exist in the world. And I've heard this many times. You know, all in all, people are good. Inherently good. Really? Then how do you explain some of the things we see in the world today? How do you explain genocide? 
How do you explain child abuse? How do you explain the, the, the vileness that we see? How do you explain uh, the destruction of marriage? How do you explain this uh, dismantling of truth if we're all good? Is it because, you know, uh, you know, we our nursery was painted the wrong color when we were a kid? Right? You know, is it because, you know, uh, my teacher used a red pen in school to grade my paper and now the color red makes me scared and sad? Right? Right? Is it because I was hugged too much as a kid? No, it was because I wasn't hugged enough as a kid. You see, we have to go to these crazy extremes to try and explain something if there's no evil. If there's no bad, if there's no one trying to catch us and lead us away and astray, then that's how we try to explain things. But that's not the way it is. You see, it's deeper, it's darker than that. The enemy is trying to tempt us. And this morning I want to look at, in the next 15 minutes or so, I want to look at how Satan tempts us. How he uses, how he has customized the bait, the lure that he's trying to use for you and for me to get us caught. And not caught from death to life, but caught from life to death. And here's some of the things he wants to do. Number one, he wants to uh, process, the process of temptation is that he wants to choose his bait seductively. Right? Right? There's a thing, there's a, there's a drawing, there's a, a seduction to uh, how you fish, right? If you just, you know, like throw the thing out there and you're just like, fish are like, dude, I have never seen a fish that swims on top of the water at like Mach 2, right? It's like that's just, the fish are like, no, dude, I'm not coming after that, right? You've got to be seductive, right? You've got to put it out there and then you've got to kind of flirt with it. And you move it just a little bit, and you just get that, oh, and the fish is like, ooh, what's that over there? Right? And the fish comes like, how you doing? And you're like, right? And the fish is like, this is amazing. Right? Mesmerized by it. Nothing else. Went, right? We start to lose the faculties, the things that we would normally be concerned of, right? We're being drawn out from cover, and we're not worried about being out from cover because we're just like, this. This is what I need. This is what I want. Right? And it's like, ooh, moves a little. You're like, ooh. Right? Stops. It's like, okay. Wounded. Ooh, it's moving. <laughs> and then finally, we're just like, I've got to have it. Oh! Right? And we grab a hold of it. And we're like, yes, I got this wonderful food. And all of a sudden, you're like, this food has hooks in it. This isn't cool. Right? And we start, we're trying to fight it. But we're hooked, right? We're hooked. That's what the devil wants. He wants to lure us out. So he, he chooses the bait seductively, right? And he wants to see what he can use in our life. And he wants to present it. We talked about presenting it, right? A couple weeks ago. You present the bait. You put it where you need it. So he wants to present it over and over and over again. Have you ever noticed how if there's a weak point in your life, if there's a, a sin in your life that maybe you're weak to, that you fall into all the time? Have you ever noticed how no matter how much you don't want it there, it always seems to show up? You're like, you know, if you're like, all right, I, I'm fighting addiction, right? I, I, I don't want I to stay away from drugs. I, I want to I wanna get away from drugs. Have you noticed how suddenly drugs are everywhere? Right? It's like, what? Uh, right? Not what it has, what it's What's that? Exactly, right? What is it attracting? What is it, what's coming in? Right? So it's, we're, we're seeing these things and it's everywhere. So he's presenting it over and over again to us. Now, you can take your lure and you can uh, customize it to what you're fishing for, but then sometimes you have to do a little bit more. Right? How many of you have ever seen like uh, videos or anything of shark fishing? All right, yeah. The crazy people who go fishing for sharks, right? Because they want to take a shark, in, get a shark in their boat. Not sure why they'd want to do that, but anyway. Right, I've never been shark fishing. I've been blue fishing, and blue fish are uh, little, tiny, mean. Well, not tiny. They're good-sized fish, but they're not like sharks. And they like to try and eat you, right? Like, seriously, you, I've caught them. You bring them in the boat, and it's like, 
You know, one fell off the hook, and he's like trying to chase us across the boat, and the guy who we were fishing with had this big club, and he's like, boom! And he pounds that thing. I'm like, what the heck? He goes, well, it was in the boat. He's like, normally I would just hang it over the side and shoot it. I'm like, thanks for not shooting the boat, I guess, but right? when you go shark fishing, they use this thing called chum, right? And it's just bloody guts, and what they do is they Chum, you don't just go out there and just start throwing it all around. You put it in specific spots, right? You put it in the right current so that it drifts further. You put it in the right place, the sharks are attracted to it, right? And what happens is when you chum right, the sharks, your prey, the thing you're going after, starts coming in and they're just like, you know, ooh, they sense this thing that they want. And all of a sudden there's blood in the water and they get into this frenzy and they're just thrashing around and they're looking for something to attack. They're looking for something to eat. And the devil does the same thing. He throws that chum near us and we're like, ooh, we're drawn to it. And we're like, oh. And we get in this feeding friends. You have, I need, I need, I need. And it can be anything, right? I need to have that. I have to have that. I I must have that, right? You know, you're, you're whatever, you're, uh, you know, looking up your stocks online or something. And all of a sudden, like, you know, there's this uh, ad for something that's kind of, provocative and you're like you know god this is satan is putting all this chum out there like uh, uh no 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 not going to do that even though pornography is a 97 billion dollar a year industry i'm not going to do that you're fine you're like all right strong go on all of a sudden there's like get rich now you're like ooh I'm looking at stocks. I need that, right? It's chum in the water. So you start swimming over there, right? You've got your fin going, right? The, the, the white of the shark's eyes start to come down because it covers it so they don't get anything in their eyes. So they can't see when they're biting. They're just like, ah. Oh, he chums for us. And he uses the types of things that draw us to him, right? So he's throwing this different temptation at us. And once he finds out what works, he keeps using it, right? When if you're out fishing and you're like, okay, you know, you pull out your, uh, you know, whatever, like one of my favorite little top waters is, uh, you know, I have this little June frog and um, it's, it's cool. It's a top water lure. It's hooked to my finger. I got caught, right? And it just goes, it just sits on the water, right? And it just goes, right? And it makes this little wake like it's, a June bug or a little frog swimming across, right? And, and if I use this and I start catching fish, I don't sit there and say, oh man, I'm catching fish with this. I better change to something else. I'm like, this is working. I'm going to keep using it. And I have all different kinds of colors of it so I can catch all of the fish who are after this, right? The devil does the same thing. He finds something that works. He's going to keep going at it in your life to get you drawn in. So he produces, he, he, he gives it to us, this temptation, uh, provocatively, seductively. So then we get hooked, because we're in this feeding frenzy, we get hooked with this temptation. And we start to look for this reason, like, what's going on? Right? How, how, how is this? Like, I've eaten fish before, but this fish, it has me hooked, and it's like, it's fighting back, and this is crazy, what's going on? We're hooked with that temptation. Right, that moment that it's presented to us is fine. Right, Satan's going to do that. There's a temptation there. Right, there's a chum in the water. He's presenting the bait, and we're like, no, no, no. But the moment we bite, we're hooked in that temptation. And now the fight is on. Now we're in this battle, and we're trying to figure out what's happening. And I hear so many people say this thing like, I don't know why God is tempting me. Folks, God doesn't tempt you. I just want you to understand that. If it's temptation, it's not God, right? Satan, the enemy, tempts us to do wrong, but God tests us to make us stronger. There's a difference. Temptation will lead to wrongdoing. Testing leads to strength and right doing, right? So Satan is tempting us. James 1.13 says this, let nobody say when they're tempted, oh, God is tempting me, right? When it says tempting, when, uh, don't let anybody say when they're drawn out of cover, and they get hooked by temptation that it's God. It's not God tempting us. God doesn't do that, right? He, de- he doesn't work that way. You see, we have the right to choose. We have the right to choose. We don't have to bite that lure just because it's presented to us. 
James 1, 16 and 17 says, don't be misled. Every good thing and every perfect gift is from the Father of lights, right? So God is presenting to us this choice, and Satan is presenting his choice, and we get to choose which one we're going to take. Now, we have a choice in which one we bite, but we don't have a choice in the consequences. You see, when we choose and we bite after that temptation, that sin that Satan puts in our life, there are consequences to that, right? Right? We, t- we, we lose out on something. We, we have an opportunity for life, but we bite the wrong thing, and now we have death in that day or in that moment or in that, uh, that area. And now we're hooked on it. Now Satan knows what he can use, but God says, no, I don't want you to do that. God says, I want you to do this. He's like, I want you to be born again. You see, temptation can lead us to desire, and that desire can lead us into sin. But God doesn't want us to do that. God wants us to have this birth, this new birth with the Word of God, the Spirit of God, who gives us this new life, right? So God wants to put that out there to give us life, right? Uh, James 1.18 says, uh, it was of his own will that he gave us birth by the Word of truth so that we would be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Truth. Truth. Truth is always true. You can write that down. That's a really good, that's extra bonus right there, right? Truth is always true. But what if I don't like truth? It doesn't matter. It's still true. What if nobody believes truth? It doesn't matter. It's still true. That's the great thing about truth is you always present the truth. You always present the truth. It's the truth. And eventually, if people want the truth, they're going to hear the truth. They're going to grab onto that truth. But if you start throwing out all these temptations, and it's not. This is one of my favorite uh, things is how do we deal with temptation? Like, all right, Mike, I get it. Satan's after me, trying to tempt me. You know, he's, he's using lures that he knows that I want. He, the right colors, the right size, the right action, right? And you're like, oh, I really want it. But how do I not do it? Because let's be honest, most of us want to do what is right, Right? It even says in the gospel, right? We see Paul's like, man, the things that I want to do, I don't do, right? The things that I do, or the things that I don't want to do, those are the things that I do. Who's going to deliver me from this, right? He's like, we're kind of screwed up. Like, I want to do the right thing, but I don't always seem to do the right thing. Anybody here ever not done the right thing? Okay, good. I was like, man, I don't want to be the only one. Thank you, Lord, for letting me not be, right? So, so how do we deal with this temptation? Well, what we need to understand is first and foremost, again, raise your hand if you've ever done the wrong thing. All right, if you're not raising your hand, uh, you can come see me afterwards and we'll talk about lying. It'll be great. It'll be really fun. I'll have you come in the office and you'll feel really excited now. Right? All of us have. The Bible tells us, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. Right? So we've all done that. So since we've all done it, you need to understand something about temptation. You are not alone. You are not alone in this. Right? Because the enemy, when he hooks us and he gets us in the temptation, he starts whispering things to us. Right? You know, like I, when I catch a fish, I'm, you know, I'm talking to the fish, right? When I, it's under the water. The fish doesn't even speak human. Right? Doesn't speak English. Not that I do all the time, but, you know, right? The fish doesn't hear me, but I'm talking to it. Like, oh, yeah, come on. No, 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 go that way. No, 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 stay away from the rock. No, 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 stay away. You know, oh, yeah, come on. Oh, yeah, I dare you to jump. Right? Well, Satan's doing the same thing when he hooks us. He's like, oh, you're the only one. No one's going to understand. You're the only one who falls into sin. You are horrible. You're wretched. No one's going to trust you. Everyone's going to hate you. You can't go back to church. How can you think you're going to go to God? God's not going to want you. Nobody's going to want you. And he starts lying to us, and we feel like we're the only person in the world who has ever sinned, or the only one who's ever done that, and he has us isolated through this temptation. But we don't have to do that. The Bible says God's given us things. He's given us ways so that we don't have to fall into that temptation, that we don't have to deal with the temptation. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says this, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Sometimes we're like, ugh. I don't know, God. This is a major temptation. Right? And some people look at this like, God doesn't know what it's like to be me. He doesn't know what it's like to be tempted. 
Jesus never had a bad day. Really? Read about his arrest. Read about what he went through. Because he loves us. Right? Yeah, sure. No, the crucifixion, that was cool. You know, didn't hurt anything. Right? You know, I mean, Jesus just got nailed to a cross. Right? A nail in each hand. A nail through his feet. Stabbed in the side. Beaten to unrecognition. Flesh torn from him. No, it was cool. He was enjoying it. Great day. No, of course, Jesus knows what it is to be tempted. He knows what it is to, to suffer. He knows what it is to be tempted, right? The Bible tells us that after Jesus was baptized, that he was out in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and Satan came himself and tempted him. Satan was trying to throw out different bait to see what he could get Jesus to bite on, because if he got Jesus to bite on it, and Jesus had fallen into sin, then Jesus couldn't die for us because he would no longer be sinless. But Jesus kept using repellent. He kept using truth, like we've talked about truth. He kept using the Word of God to push it away. So the Word tells us that God is faithful. Above all things, God is faithful. He won't leave us. We're not alone in it because even if we are the only one in our people group who's willing to say that we're being tempted, God says, I'm with you in this. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So God always gives us an escape route when we're tempted. He provides a way out. And sometimes it just shows up in crazy ways. Right? You're you're tempted, you're about to do something stupid, phone rings. It's like one of your Christian friends and you're like, do that? Hello? Oh, you know, hey, so-and-so just, I thought God put you on my heart. Why would God do that? I don't know. God just said, hey, give Mike a call. I wasn't doing anything. No, 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 totally. No, I understand that. Of course you weren't. Because we don't ever do anything wrong. Except all of us just admitted to it a few minutes ago. It's on video. You raise your hand. No, I'm just kidding. It is on video, and you did raise your hand, but I'm not sure it caught you doing it. It caught me doing it. But anyway, so God always provides a way out. He gives us endurance to run this race so that we can outrun and outlast the enemy. Right? Because here's the thing. If you are a follower of Christ, you've made that walk across the bridge, you are a Christian, born again, your life is eternal with God. Right? There's always what you can always outlast because Satan's time is ending. Right? There will come a day when Christ will return, he'll take Satan and the enemy and all of his demons, cast them into the fiery pit for eternity. There's going to come a day when that's going to happen. So his time is limited, but our time isn't. Right? We have this everlasting life. So we can go through this temptation. We can give this endurance. But here's another thing. When it says that God will not let us be tempted beyond what you can bear. On fishing poles, right? I'll just take this fishing pole, for instance. That's wrapped around the giant hook. You probably can't see it, but you probably know it's there. There's a stuff, it, it comes out of the reel, it's called fishing line, right? And there's all kinds of different types of fishing line, but also within different types of fishing line, there's also different strengths of fishing line. I happen to use 10 pound test, just because I've never caught a 10 pound bass here in Maine. I've never caught a 10 pound bass anywhere, honestly, but you know, it'd be like a record if I did around here. But there, it's 10 pounds. What it means is that it can take 10 pounds of pressure pulling before boing snaps. So if you keep it under 10 pounds, you know, seven, eight pounds, you're good, right? So that's what it, 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 it we can fight, right? We can fight with it. We can, we, God gives us not what we can bear. So he's like, okay, your 10 pound test or your 50 pound test, depending on how strong you are. He's like, you can withstand the temptation. It won't snap you. It won't pull you apart. But when we start getting up into that nine, 10, right? That's when it starts to, to get more difficult. That's when it starts to stretch. And God says, I'm never going to let you get beyond the pound test that you are. He said, if you're 50, he said, I'm not ever going to let you get to 50, 51, 52. He said, I'll never let that happen. I'm going to keep you down 48. And it can seem hard. It can seem like, man, this line might snap, but that's not how God 
works. God knows exactly how much we can take. And He knows exactly how much uh, we can endure. He knows exactly what situations to put us in and what to bring in because He's faithful so that we won't fall into that temptation. God wants the best for you. And He's throwing out that bait to bring you from death to life. The enemy is fishing for you and He wants to bring you from life to death. So this morning, I want you to just think about that. Don't fall into that temptation. Check what it is that's there. See what's being presented. Go to God's Word, right? And see, like, what is it? What is that? Is that temptation? Oh, it is. No, that's from the devil. I don't want anything to do with it. I want to walk away from that. I want to walk in wisdom. I want to walk following the Lord. I want to be hooked on Jesus and His plan for my life. Let's pray. Father, we come to You this morning. We're just so thankful. Lord, we can thank You for temptation that the devil puts out there because when he's coming after us, when he's fishing for us, it's because we are walking with You. It's because we have life. And he wants to steal that from us. And I thank You, Father God, that You sent Your Son, Jesus Christ, to come and to live a sinless life, to to face that temptation, but to never give in to it but to die for each and every one of us so that we could be hooked on Him, so that we could go from death to life, that eternal life that you talk about, that if we believe in Him, as John 3.16 says, that we shall not perish, but have that everlasting life, that Jesus came to die for the sins of the world, and we can go and we can choose life, and we don't have to take death. Lord, I thank you for that. If you're here this morning and you've never been hooked on Jesus. You've never taken that walk across the bridge. You've never gone from the side of humanity where it's sin and death and destruction that the thief is trying to get into us. And you've never walked across to life and hope and a future with God. I want to give you that opportunity this morning. Right? It's simple. It's found in these bracelets that we have on here. Right? The, the black is, we were in that sin and death, but because of the red, because of the blood of Jesus, Him paying for our sins on the cross, we, He's our Savior. And we can just take that walk and we can accept that free gift, and then we are gold, we are righteous. And through that righteousness that we have in our life, we have the green here on the bracelet, and we start to produce fruit in our life. But if you are on this side of the bridge of humanity, and God maybe is speaking to you, and He's presented, and I've presented to you the gospel, the truth, the good news, I want you to get hooked on Jesus this morning. And it's so easy. It's, it's just as simple as this. Just, just pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank You. Thank you for paying for my sin. Thank you for building that bridge that I can walk across, which is your truth. This morning, right here, right now, I'm taking your bait, your truth, that free gift, and I'm, right now I'm being hooked on you. If you're saying that prayer for the first time this morning, would you just slip your hand up? I just want to be able to pray for you if anybody's making that, that transition this morning. And if you've already made that decision in your life, then I want you to stop being drawn in by the chum. I want you to start focusing on God and and, and living life abundantly. Father God, I thank you for what you've done in life. I thank you for this series. I thank you for what you're doing. I just praise you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.